like to welcome NBA Commissioner David Stern for a very special presentation. Steve, you led a group of talented basketball players. You did it with energy, with resolve, but most of all, leadership by example. So congratulations, 2004, 2005. I was surprised and uh, I was I was appreciative at the same time uh, you know I realized that it was a, a little injustice you know I think it'd be nice if everyone could have shared it. You know, I think fittingly uh, for me to win this award you know I couldn't have done it without my teammates so I don't know if this is proper protocol but I'd like for you guys to all come up here with me and kind of hang with me and share this with me. I never ever you know dreamed of being MVP so you know, it's, it is uh, mind-boggling to to realize that even even though something I never even dreamed of, and at the same time to be you know mentioned with some of these guys that I grew up idolizing and that are uh, immortal to me in many ways is uh, it's unreal. What more could we say than congratulations, Steve Nash, 2005-2006. NBA Most Valuable Player. I was surprised both years uh, to win the award. I think um, I never ever, you know, dreamed of being MVP. So and I really don't know how to conceptualize that experience. Struggling and staggering out of the block. And Phoenix off to their worst start since the 96-97 season. Well, it wasn't the way we planned um, to start 1-5, and five, but I think we realized we had uh, too good a team and too much experience to you know, have that type of season. Nash to Omari. Look out! Farther out west. Great steal by Nash. Three on two. Into shot. And there he goes, with confidence in full flight, taking this Phoenix team with him to a 17th straight win. Well, I love a challenge, you know. I love uh, to compete. Nash with an NBA high, 20 assists. I get motivated just by the fact that uh, I love to compete, and I feel really fortunate that I have somewhere to challenge myself. He's a guy that steps up to the challenge. Take a look at his numbers across the board. Nash takes the opening, drives in with the left hand, and the foul! You know, basketball allows me to, you know, get up in the morning and, and get some, and have motivation and have a spirit about me and some excitement and optimism. And, you know, I think that is such a huge part of the happiness of my life. Steve Nash, in my opinion, is the best point guard to ever play pick and roll basketball. Well, you know, it's interesting because it's sometimes forgotten that the Suns uh, drafted Steve Nash uh, midway through the first round, 15th of the first round, when he came out of Santa Clara. And uh, they just didn't feel that Steve was going to get that much playing time early in his career, so they talked to him and said, uh, you know, it might be a better situation for you, Steve, if you were traded. So the trade was made. Uh, but I think those years in Dallas is really, uh, being quite honest, is when Steve really developed as an NBA player. Nash off the dribble. Got it! Big money shot! <sighs> what makes him special, uh, apart from his talents, a lot of people have a lot of talents, uh, even more talent than he has, but what makes him special is his ability to prepare himself mentally and physically in the offseason and during the season. Nash from downtown, you got to be kidding me! What a ball game! He wants you to prepare the best you can, go out there and play as hard and as smart as you can. If you get beat, you get beat. He doesn't have a problem with that, but he just wants to make sure you know you give yourself a chance, and that's a great way to, uh, I think, to lead a team. You know, it's an old hackneyed phrase, but he is a coach on the floor. There's no question about it. He reflects the coaching personality 
of Mike D'Antoni, probably as well as you, any point guard you could even imagine. Yeah, when he goes middle, he's trying to cut it off. No, you don't. No, no, somebody else got You just don't want him to get to the hoop. Yeah. You want to stay under him so he goes to the dots of the free throw and the shot. It's our responsibility. Well, for me, I think that leadership is about being yourself. Um, you know, I think we're all leaders, like it or not, and uh, I don't think anyone respects or follows or, you know, takes note of what you're doing if you're not being yourself, if they don't buy it, if they're, you know, if you're trying to be a leader when you're not, you can still lead by example, you can still lead by com commitment, by, um, you know, just being consistent. For me, having more experience than a lot of guys, you know, I'm a little more vocal, um, but at the same time, you know, I'm not really a yeller and a screamer. I just try to be myself. I try to be happy. I think being happy around the guys and being uh, positive is contagious, and uh, I think that goes a long way. There's a time and place where you got to, you know, show your displeasure but for the most part for me I try to be uh, happy, be positive, encouraging, allow guys to be enjoying themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I think that when everyone feels comfortable and confident and is enjoying themselves you, know, you got a great chance for them to succeed. 1.5 seconds left. Barbosa for three. And he wow. made it. 1.5 seconds left. Barbosa getting high fives and hugs from his teammates. Yes, yeah, wow. How does it feel to be one of the few teams that won 15 in a row twice in one season? Uh, it feels good. I mean, I guess it's something, but uh, at the same time, we don't really uh, draw a lot from regular season. I mean, we really are trying to uh, do the best we can in the playoffs and, and win a championship. and. And that's really our only focus. You know, uh, it's important to us to get home court, but how we get there is 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 not the important issue. So how many winning streaks and of how many games, um, you know, are really secondary. We're proud of our performance, but we're not going to make a parade route yet. You know, I think just working hard all summer and, and trying to be a, a better player this year and a better teammate, you know, the numbers are up so people take notice. You know, I also realize that I, the numbers can be misleading sometimes, and I'm not saying they are in this case, but uh, and I think people make a big deal sometimes out of it. So here we go. You have to go for the tie. He takes the three for the tie. It's short. They might get another chance. Marion, his man's another three. Oh, The ordinary fan is is overwhelmed by uh, the the Sports Center highlight uh, uh, reel every night, and they see the dunks, and they never see Steve Nash. Nash is that ball move that tells Stoudemire to get out of the way. Oh. Steve hits the deck, <laughs> hits the glass, hits the hoop. Oh man! MVP! 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 You know, every year he's not in the conversation for MVP when the season starts, and even after winning two, he wasn't. But then all he does is come out and get better, and it's just remarkable for a player at, at you know past the age of 30 to continue to get better and better like he has. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it, man. MVP right there. How the girls MVP. doing? I'm doing great. A lot of people uh, look at MVP awards differently, but I think the majority of those that vote look at the MVP as a player who not only is a great player himself, but that makes his teammates better. The bounce to Stoudemire, oh. soaring, dunking, and a foul! What do you say? It's hard to say it bugs me because it's obviously flattering and you would never want to, uh, I don't know, disrespect the game. Having said that, though, I think in the last two seasons, the MVP award has, has definitely been a huge compliment to my teammates. <laughs> Perfect, just hold that. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you good, Rob? Hell was job, guys. Right. Was job. You handle interviews, you, you, you do the media thing really great. Is there a part of you, though, that 
you want to shy away from the camera mm -hmm. and the spotlight. <laughs> You've noticed. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Welcome to Roma. Thank you. Everywhere we go in the world, almost now, we get recognized NBA players, and um, in some ways that's fantastic, you know, that the league is, uh, is recognized and watched, and people enjoy your play, even if they don't even speak English. Steve. Hi. Steve Nash. Nice to meet you. On the other hand, you know, I do like to be private. I do like to, to do other things other than basketball and get away from the game when I'm not practicing or playing, so sometimes it can be difficult. You know, I still try to handle it the best way I can, and hopefully, I don't, uh, uh, you know, rub anyone the wrong way. Can you guys uh, leave this off the dress code of our relationship? We're seven women from Ottawa. <laughs> You know, I feel fortunate to have so many fans. I feel fortunate to do what I do, and you know, I'm, I'm happy to uh, to take that on, even if I am a little bit private. Really appreciate it. Good luck next week. Real bad this morning. We get some lotion. All right, guys. Um, TNT game. You know, again, time to you know. Just don't put any doubts in anybody's mind that we can be beat. So let's uh, let's come out, just focus and play our game, and we should be fine. Well, it's simply a team is guys working together to be the best they can be as a group. You know, to me, that's uh, it should it should be simple, you know, and that's what it is to me. Let's play it, Dan. It's really all these parts that they've put together that just fit so perfectly. It's putting Raja Bell, Leandro Barbosa around it, and adding in pieces. It just everything is just fits so well together, and that's really a testament to the front office and their vision for what could be an entertaining and successful product. And uh, you know, and Steve Nash makes everything blend together. <laughs> Not everyone's capable of sacrificing for the the good of the group, and. And that's why the simplest of uh, aspirations can be difficult for, for some groups and teams and individuals. And you know, I think that uh, each team fights that, and, and I think our team probably has to fight that some too and sacrifice. But everyone is sacrificing. Four point four left. Nets one thirty three. Suns one thirty. D out a toss in. Diaw taking his time, finds Nash, puts up a three, and got it! 2.1 remaining, we are tied at 133. Kid up the floor, heave at the buzzer, doesn't go. We're going to overtime. Well, the New Jersey game was, uh, you know, it was a special game. I think that, uh, you know, we'd flown all the way out the night before, and, uh, it's not always easy to do that, to fly to the East Coast and play the next night. And uh, I think on top of that, Rod Thorne had called the Nets out. Kid, yeah, they give him the jumper. And he uses the window. And those guys uh, really took that game like a playoff game. Kid thought about the three. Jefferson will take the three. They need it. He's got it. I think that, you know, it took a lot of will from us to withstand uh, you know, the, the determination that they show. Diaw left three for a moment. Christich comes over. Jump shot, arm close up. That's a triple. Can either team stop the other? 3.9 left in overtime. The Nets gunning for the win. They get it in the kid. Three seconds left. Two seconds. Jumper. It rims out. We're going to double overtime. Subconsciously, I think sometimes in this league, it gets you know, the season rolls on, and you just think of sometimes as a game as another game. But it wasn't another game to them under the circumstances, and we had to find a way to, to match that uh, intensity. And so it was a battle. Now a double, Diaz open, kick out, Barbosa seven to shoot, Nash, that's a three, he buries it, kid. 10 to shoot. Match up with Marion. Blows by him. Left hand. Count it. And the foul. What a game. 30 seconds left. 
Portillo. Back in, turn around. He's got it. A marathon at the Meadowlands. And that's it. As entertaining a game as we've seen in the NBA this season. But the Suns outlast the Nets 161 to 157. Steve Nash, a career performance, 42 points. That game was one of the, obviously, uh, the, the better wins in that we found a way to hang around. We found a way to win the game. Hey, a couple things. As you get in your hotel room tonight, turn on uh, Classic NBA. It's already in the Classic. <laughs> It'll be on the night already. Because that was one of the best games I've ever seen or heard or whatever. You know, it was a great battle. And I think that uh, in the end, it was a big win for us because they came out with that energy. And we had to find it. So, uh, you know, I was proud of us for, for finding a way collectively to hang with all the uh, motivation they had. I think there's a fine line between, uh, uh, you know, being in the moment and, in this, and on the other hand, you know, trying to have some foresight into what you're going through and what you're doing and what you're accomplishing and what that'll mean after your career. And For me, I've decided, you know, just to be in the moment enjoy it, be myself, and I think that'll give me perspective and balance. Oh, that's uh, uh, oh. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> Got a little prick put it in there. <laughs> God. Oh, that get that one on tape. We'll leave that one. I think that if I were constantly worrying about uh, the history we're creating, individually or as a team, I think the burden and the focus becomes wrong. You didn't get it on tape. So you guys are messed up. He just kicked it in from half court. You got it? Hey, we got it. Hey, hey, we got it. We can make another video. <laughs> so I try to enjoy every day. I try to challenge myself. Um, I try not to think about how much I can always accomplish. Instead, I try to think about doing my work and how much fun I can have with my teammates. Because I think when you're done, you know, no matter how many MVPs or championships you rack up, if you didn't have a good time with your teammates and didn't have a fun experience day to day, you know, what does it really mean? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was almost embarrassed. <laughs> I look so bad. <laughs> so I think there's a balance that's important. And uh, I think that's more important to me as being in the moment and finding that balance than, than really trying to worry about the history that we're, that we're a part of. <laughs> I think about life without basketball and what I miss most. Uh, obviously, I miss my teammates a lot, but I think on a personal level, I would miss having a place to challenge myself and a place to grow and to learn. I think about life without a true passion or without something to really try to get better at and try to figure out and try to conquer, it'd be depressing, I think. It'd be boring and uh, I would really be a little bit lost. Well, I think for me, the big thing is to try to enjoy it. I'm not getting younger. Um, I feel great, but uh, if I can keep my mind, uh, you know, fresh and, and keep myself hungry and I think the way to do that is to have fun and to really uh, you know want to do it and want to be out there 
Ask him, ask him whether you'd rather do play one game here, here at Madison Square Garden, or one game on a soccer field in downtown <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> no, I'd rather play in the garden. Well, it's a toss up. <laughs> I'm lucky I play with great guys, try to enjoy it as much as I can. Um, the day it starts to drag for me and starts to become uh, too much of a job, you know, that's when I think my body will feel tired and my game will suffer. Inside again, the double whammy, Nash Tamaria. And just, uh, you know, see what else we can do. There's a lot left for us to accomplish. There's a lot more experiences out there, so right now I'm still excited. And our second round is set in the Western Conference semifinals. The Phoenix Suns will take on the San Antonio Spurs. The Lakers are out in five. Phoenix has eliminated Los Angeles and Phil Jackson four games to one. You know this, you know where this next series is, right? You know, this is it. But uh, that's a hell of a job, guys. Enjoy it for tonight, and then tomorrow we'll get ready, or, you know, day after we'll get ready for San Antonio. Good job. You know, we have the best chance to win a championship and we don't look back and say, you know, we really, uh, uh, we didn't improve through the season and we didn't prepare ourselves well enough to win in the playoffs. Well, you need some work? Whatever. Maybe I'm getting old and boring or, uh, you know, maybe I just, uh, you know, want to win it and uh, I'm only going to enter into to what that in, you know encompasses and uh, maybe I've shed some of the extra stuff and just not that it, it's even tangible but you know I probably uh, just am a little, little more uh, focused on what we're trying to do. And we're all alert to the ball and we're all alert to be able to help Sean that there's no clear drives to the ball. Okay? What Nash has done over and it's still the last chapters have yet to be filed but I think he'll lead probably as the most popular son ever because not only has he, will he have the most hardware with already two trophies sitting in the MVP trophies sitting in his hallway at home but with the team's sustained success this probably will be the greatest uh, era of Suns basketball as far as sustained su success and if they bring the first championship well that'll put them on another plane that might not ever be touched. The championship is the only frontier, really. You know, uh, personal awards are, are, are great um, for, for your personal life, but, uh, you know, for me, that this is a team sport, and the only ones that really matter uh, are the team awards. I mean, that's the only thing there is. That's that's all that's really out there is to try to win a championship. Now, some teams don't have the talent to do it, uh, but you try to do the best you can and achieve as much as you can collectively. And uh, you know, we hope that with this group, you know, that our belief is is justified that if we live up to our expectations as a group, you know, we'll be right there at the end.